Hey peeps, we are back. We're talking to Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 12, episode 16. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. So before we get into the show, let's talk about these reunion looks. I posted them um, in the community tab earlier this weekend. Um, I'm going to be really honest. I didn't really like any of these dresses. I usually try to go off the dresses and um, I didn't think any of these dresses were really that great. First place for me is Candy. I thought Candy's head to toe look was really beautiful. Then Sheree, then Kenya, then Drew, then Marlo, then Sanya. Sanya was my least favorite look. I hated the dress. I hated that she didn't smile in the photo and I really hated the wig. Um, I felt like those guys from In Living Color hated it, two snaps and a twist. I mean, I really was not here for it. Um, but you guys get down in the comments and let me know what you think. Who was your favorite? So at the very beginning, we see Candy take Ace to his acting coach. And I am not shocked or surprised. Candy is all about the entertainment business. She is also all about making that bag. Ace has his own Instagram. He has his own clothing line. You know, why not also throw his hat into the acting ring? I think that Ace is adorable. And I am pretty sure Blaze will be entering the entertainment business at some point. I don't know when, but at some point. We also see that Drew is in a full cast. She has had surgery on her ruptured Achilles. She ended up with over 20 stitches. I felt really bad for Drew, but she is recovering. She is at home and she is pumped up on pain medication. At one point in the middle of her conversation with Sheree and Sanya, she falls to sleep. She's got a light snore. Girl, it's okay. Um, she deserves all the rest she could get, poor thing. But it was surprising to see that Sheree and Sanya are the ones who stopped by to see her, considering that they have had such a rocky relationship. But you know what? It was nice to see that they were there to support Drew. My girl, I was not prepared, girl. That girl ate me up, okay? <laughs> I feel like I'm winning in my head, but the word is not coming out. <laughs> she felt like he was a little aggressive. She wished she had a man that would stand up for her. How about that? <laughs> hey, is everything okay? I was calling you because I was sitting with Sheree and, and she had told me some of the stuff you said, so I wanted to ask you about it. When? On the she bamboo. Was... Uh, Cat to... got your tongue now? I have to wake up and call you back. That really upset me. Okay, okay, Sonia. I don't appreciate you I don't talking think about I her. I never use that word, but I don't, I don't remember. Well, that was the sentiment. That, that was the sentiment, and it's not cool. Okay. Okay, okay. Kenya. All right, okay. Bye, bitch. Well, first I wanna say that I appreciate that Sanya was very honest, you know. Um, Kenya ate her to hell up, you know, and she said that in her head she was winning, but no ma'am, no ma'am. You lost, we saw that. Um, I also think it was real shady how she just tries to call Kenya for an audience and then she's, oh, the cat got your tongue, girl, bye. The only reason why you got any conversation is because Kenya was half asleep when you called her out of the blue. That was ridiculous and low. And don't think that I didn't catch that after you hung up, you said, bye, bitch. You didn't say that while she was on the line. Sanya, listen, hon. I know that you've recently filmed the reunion and I am highly anticipating Kenya reading you for filth, shading you to the ground at this reunion. You jumped off at the wrong time. Your mouth couldn't handle Drew. How the hell did you think you could handle Kenya? As she has said many times before, if she doesn't call you, don't show the hell up. You do too much, you do too much. And I felt that Sheree was wrong for bringing that up. This whole season, Sheree has been Team Marlo, Team Sanya for the foolishness. But she has been getting so much love and support from Kenya. 
Kenya showed up to support you while you have not done anything to uplift or help Kenya. In any kind of way, you are not supportive. You want everybody to be there for you to support you regarding your situation with Tyrone. But where are you when it comes to Kenya and her needs regarding her divorce or anything else? You know what, Sheree? I'm over you. Winter, spring, summer, or September. I've had it with you. Then we go to Sheree's model search. She's looking for models for her She by Sheree fashion show that is a complete mess right now. She's got this show coming up and everything is falling apart. She has no fashions. You know, she doesn't have a budget for models, even though she claims that she spent about a million dollars. Why aren't we facing that way? This is how I normally do my fashion shows and I'm sure if you- So the wrong way. Yeah. You need to be real models. You have to have a budget for real models. Oh, it is. I've already spent a million dollars just trying to get these samples. Well, no, we don't have your contact. This okay. is uh, this is how I do it. Actual. I'm gonna do it my way if you don't mind, because I'm the one Please that's gonna be on assisting. Thank you. That's fine. I'll just make her feel better. Yeah, it makes me feel better. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for me too. Confetti. Mmm. This isn't my first rodeo. I promise. Well, but this looks like your first rodeo. Kenya went out online and she said, give Rowan a peach. She's beautiful and funny. Listen, Rowan said, I'm not here for the mess. Okay, she went back and forth with Kenya and did way better with Kenya than Sanya has ever done. When she said, confetti, I laughed my butt off. I never would have thought of that. I mean, leave this girl alone. Kenya, her advice was on point but leave this lady alone. She is doing her best and she probably isn't making very much money from Sheree at all. And Sheree looked quite embarrassed. She said, Kenya, Kenya. And then at some point you could see Sheree turning her head back and forth as if she was at a tennis match, listening to Kenya and Rowan. That was hilarious. But when Rowan said, you need a budget for real models. Oh my Lord. I said, oh gosh. Kenya said, whoop. I think Rowan was telling the truth. She's doing the best she can with what she has. If Sheree is not willing to pay for models, I don't know, you know, what does she expect? She was, you know, some comments about the models being so short. You know, you are not about to get five, nine and up, you know, runway models for zero dollars. You have to take what you can get. And currently you don't even have any fashions to put on these five, four uh, models. I'm just saying. I was thinking, doesn't Cynthia still have her modeling agency in Atlanta? Couldn't Sheree had reached out to Cynthia? I'm sure Cynthia would have been happy to furnish her with models and possibly would have given her a discount. Then they have a little section where they're talking about Ralph and his book. He's having his photo shoot. And my thing is this, Ralph can't legally adopt Josiah without his father's permission anyway, because his father would have to relinquish his custody rights. Is that right? For you lawyers, get down in the comments and let me know, but I really did think that in order to have an adoption, you have to get the other parent's approval. I don't know. I'm not really sure why Drew is pushing this, considering her and Ralph's marriage is not that great. Um, I would wait until Josiah was old enough to voice what he wanted. But right now, I don't think it's a big deal that Ralph doesn't adopt Josiah. Then we see that the boys are back at Marlo's house. And my thing is this, I think that Marlo should stop filming with these boys because throughout the process of her talking to her sister and getting the boys back, again, she kept bringing up that they're nasty, their hygiene is off, all this stuff. You know, boys are like that, especially until they get into their upper teens. They're not the biggest on cleanliness and showering and things like that. And as parents, we have to stay on them about it. We have to remind them, boy, if you don't get in that shower and brush your teeth, we constantly have to do that. But once they get to a certain age and once we have brought it up so many times, it gets embedded in their thoughts and they're, they get used to it and they start doing it. Plus, when they got back, they kind of shaded the sister and said, you know, her bathroom is dirty. They don't have their own room there. You know, she works a full-time job. She's got four toddlers and then she had two teenagers. How much cleaning is this lady gonna get done? You know what I mean? I thought it was a little shady. Marlo was saying that this time when the boys are back, she's gonna do her best to get some structure. Children do need structure. 
but they also need consistency. They need love. They need honesty. They need open communication and they need to feel safe. So Marlo needs to try to incorporate all of that along with therapy with the boys and therapy separately because she's got a lot going on and Marlo needs to be on somebody's couch for sure. So then we see that Drew has gone all out to plan a party and this party is to celebrate Marlo's birthday as well as Kenya's birthday. However, she has told everybody that this is a party for her. It's a get well party for Drew. So none of the girls are able to spill the beans, even though it's her and Sheree planning for this party. So this is a little much for me. Well, if you would have been here, you could have had some input. That's all I'm gonna say. Well, Thank you. But since yes. I didn't have any input, maybe I'll just give you a fourth of the invoice. Okay. I don't understand. We all know it's no shade. She don't like to pay. I am not paying for other bitches' bright ideas, especially when the bitch ain't that bright. Now listen, Sheree, that's shady as hell. And I agree with Kenya later in the episode when she mentions that Sheree is wearing a $7,000 sweater. The last couple episodes when Sanya hosted that party at her house, it was Sheree, Kenya, and Drew calling her party a party city party, talking about how trashy and cheap it was. But now here Drew is pulling out all the stops to put on this beautiful party and Sheree doesn't want to pay her part, which is $1,300. Uh, no ma'am, no ma'am. And that comment that she made about Drew, I am pretty sure that has been brought up at the reunion. Pay the woman, quit playing. She said that they were stuck in Alaska last I heard. You're lying to me. Did she really say her fashions are lost in Alaska? Come on, think harder. How the hell do you just close the door on my face? I be telling Marlo, don't fight with Kenya. We both have said awful things. You're the only woman I know with a square reader between your legs. You are so worried about my life and my husband. Maybe if you stop f***ing everybody else's husband, you could get one of your own, honey. Nobody wants to be a prostitute. If a woman accused your man of being aggressive towards women. Bitch, you wish you had a man like that. What would you do if you were hosting a party, okay, with a friend, <laughs> and they offered to pay for half of the bill and then dish that for on it? Oh! oh. I'm planning a fashion show oh, with this $7,000 oh. sweater on. How many pieces do you have at this point? I don't have anything right now. How she spent all that money on these invitations with little outfits in them, but you couldn't get outfits made to go in your fashion show? That baffles me. I do not understand. So you might as well just start making fashions for Barbie. Get out of a fashion, fashion, fashion show without fashions. How dreadful. Fashion show with no fashions. How dreadful. I've already spent a million dollars. Bitch said a million dollars. The bitch did not say a million dollars. The bitch hearing things. Candy, post that she needs someone. And I'm sure somebody will reach out tomorrow. Who's working for free? Apparently, Drew. Now listen. When they played those flashbacks of Kenya reading Marlo for filth, I said, oh, gosh. They don't call her the Shade Assassin for no reason. I mean, that was, wow. Not the square reader between your legs. I mean, jeez. Ooh, that was rough. That would have brought some tears to my eyes if she was talking about me, but she could have never said that about me because I'm a lady. I'm just saying. Um, yeah, Marlo, she got you. But Marlo, you have said things to her that have been disgusting downright disgusting and a lot worse than the things that she said about you. I personally would not try to get Marlo and Kenya to bridge a friendship. I would just say, go on about your business. Let it be done. These two cannot get along more than two minutes. So move on. Um, Candy and the, you might as well just make fashions for Barbie. Um, <laughs> I, I, Oh my gosh, I shook my head and laughed and then I had to rewind it because I needed to hear it again. And then Kenya standing up talking about a fashion show without fashions, how dreadful. Um, this was a lot. Uh, Dad going at Sheree. Listen, listen, when Sheree first mentioned she by Sheree, Barack Obama was running for president you know, he became the president twice. 
Um, then we had Trump and now we have Joe Biden and we still don't have she by charade. Um, girl, girl, I'm tired. I'm tired. I can say the invitations were quite cute, but it baffles me the same way it baffles Candy. You know, how are you spending all this money for these cute little invitations? We can't wear these tiny clothes inside of the invitations. I don't understand why she didn't reach out to Candy and say, listen, I've got this fashion show, it's three or four weeks away and none of my fashions are coming through. I've got all the designs, I got all this fabric, but nothing. Candy would have done something. She would have reached out to somebody. She would have figured out a way to help you with this. There's no way that I could be in a friend group that includes Candy Burris and I have not talked to her about my business. She knows people. She knows the ins and outs of business. Oh, I forgot to mention when Kenya shut the door in Marlo's face. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was savage and that was ridiculous. Um, Marlo said, why would she do that? Why do you think she did it? Good gracious, these women are too much. So Sandia standing up talking that mess about, you wish you had a husband like mine. Kenya just laughed that off. And Kenya said, girl, don't call for me because I will come and then send you back. Sandia, several seats. Yo, Phaedra left me to basically rock. You know, that's how I look at it. Now, why, why do you say that? Because you when it first happened, she wasn't there. My sentencing, she wasn't there. My self-surrender, she wasn't there. Basically not allowing me to see my children. It was a lot of things that showed me you really wasn't, you wasn't there for me. When I went away, Phaedra was definitely cold-blooded. Listen, what the hell is Apollo doing with a confessional? Why is she talking to Apollo about Tyrone? I thought we was done with Tyrone. You are still pining over Tyrone and then you want to talk to Apollo about it? And then Apollo comes on here to drag Phaedra. I said, oh, hell no. There is no way Apollo should be on here talking about Phaedra. If she can't come on to defend herself. And Apollo, don't act like we didn't see you on the show threaten and yell at her. You also went into prison with a girlfriend. You were the one who did the crime. You are the one who does the time. I would never bring my children down to prison to see you. Oh, hell no. Me and my kids, we, we didn't do anything wrong. Uh, no, we're going to sit here living in this lap of luxury like we have been using my legal funds. No, sir, we don't go to the prison. Absolutely. I'm not taking my child out to jail to see you. Are you kidding me? You done talked to me like crap. You treated me like shit. You broke the law and now you got a fiance too? Boy, bye. Carry your ass on, okay? You live at Fort Dix, not me and my kids. I'm just saying. And I don't think he has the right to come on TV and say anything bad about her. After all this time while you were in jail, she was raising your children. I mean, seriously, Apollo kick rocks. Anyway, you guys, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.